Hello everyone, my name is Brant Kudrowski and this Organic Chemistry Lab video covers a separation of anison components experiment. This is part two, extractions and filtrations. In the previous video in the series, I outlined a scheme to separate the components of anison using a series of extractions. Now we're going to describe how to do those extractions. One type of extraction is called a solid liquid extraction. For a good analogy of this, think of making coffee or making tea. You've got a material that you want to remove components of, say for example, coffee grounds. You want to extract out the flavor components, the caffeine, and all of the good stuff that makes coffee out of those grounds. So you treat them with hot water and those water soluble compounds make their way into the water and separate out from the coffee grounds. We're going to do a similar thing today with a mixture of our anison tablets that contain the three different components. To illustrate solid liquid extraction, I'm going to show you how it works with a mixture of two components. It's a hypothetical mixture here of a solid labeled A and B. The A components are listed as little circles and the B components are listed as little squares. Here in this beaker, they're represented as being together in a solid. The first thing I'll do is add a solvent that dissolves the solid A, but doesn't dissolve solid B. Then in the beaker, that will look like this, where now we have some of the A component floating around in solution here, while the B material is undissolved and remains at the bottom of the beaker as a solid. Notice that some of the A molecules are still stuck in that solid material. Extractions are never perfect and not all of the A will necessarily dissolve in the solution, but most of molecule A dissolves. Then we need to separate the solution from the solid. We can do that by filtration or simply pouring off the liquid solution and that gives us two materials. There's a beaker on the left here that contains the residue, mostly B with a little bit of A, and then the beaker on the right which contains a filtered solution of A. Now I'm going to do another extraction of the solid residue material to try to recover more of the A material. To do this, I'll add a fresh portion of solvent, swirl it around, then hopefully most of the rest of the A material dissolves in that solvent. In this picture, I'm trying to represent that more of the A material has dissolved in solution, but the B material remains as a solid in the bottom of the beaker. Now I'll separate the solution from the solid, and that will give me a beaker with a residue of the solid B, and also a solution of A, which I'll combine with the solution from before, put it together in a big beaker, and now I'll have two containers. One contains the solution of A, the other contains the solid B, and the materials have been separated. This slide describes what a separatory funnel is and its various components. Here's a picture of a separatory funnel that's being supported on a ring stand. There's a stopper in the top and then a stopcock valve down towards the bottom that allows you to drain material out the bottom of the funnel. This apparatus is used for liquid-liquid extractions where you have two liquid phases that you need to separate. Here I have a picture of the separatory funnel with a liquid in it, stoppered at the top, and the valve is in the open position. I've got the valve temporarily open here to allow gases to escape. The idea with the separatory funnel is oftentimes we'll shake it to allow two phases to commingle and materials to move between the phases, and that sometimes generates some gas. So we'll need to invert it and vent it like this by opening the valve temporarily to allow the gas to escape. You just have to make sure that you rotate the valve 90 degrees to close it before you turn the separatory funnel right side up, otherwise liquid will drain out the bottom. The separatory funnel separates mixtures of phase separated liquids. Think of a two phase mixture like oil and water. To separate the liquids, you drain the bottom layer out the bottom, and then it's best practices to pour the top layer out the top of the separatory funnel. This slide describes how a liquid-liquid extraction works. Imagine that you have a solution of two molecules A and B that are dissolved in a solvent inside of a separatory funnel. You'll want to add a solvent that dissolves the molecule A, but not the molecule B, and it has to form a layer on top of the solvent, so it has to be immiscible in the solvent that's already in the separatory funnel. If you can find a solvent like that and shake up the separatory funnel, you'll get a situation like this, where the A molecules have migrated preferentially into the new solvent, but there still could be a little bit left in there, which I've indicated here with a single A molecule that's left floating around in the lower layer. Mostly though, the upper phase is A and the lower phase is B. Now drain the bottom layer out the bottom and collect it in a beaker or some other container and pour the top layer out the top of the separatory funnel to collect it as a separate layer. Now what I'll want to do is put that lower layer back into the separatory funnel so I can go after the remaining A molecules and separate them out. Basically I'm going to repeat the extraction one more time to try to increase my yield of A. Now I'm going to add a fresh portion of solvent and repeat the extraction. And when I do that, the hope is that the rest of the A molecules will migrate into the upper layer. Then I can drain the bottom layer out the bottom as I did before. And now I have the B molecules in the lower layer and I can pour the top layer out the top, combining it with the previous layer of A to give a combined upper layer that contains hopefully all of the A molecules. 
Gravity filtration is described on this slide. Gravity filtration is simply a method that uses gravity to pull the solution through filter paper. It's a very simple setup that looks like this. There's a beaker or some other container to catch the solution in, a funnel, and some filter paper that's been folded into a cone. Solution is poured through this filter, it drains through by gravity, and collects in the beaker. One thing you can do to increase the efficiency of the filtration is to put folds in your filter paper. That's what I'm showing here in this picture on the right. This is what's called fluted filter paper. It's just a cone that's been folded many more times. Every additional fold increases the surface area and it tends to increase the efficiency of the filter paper. Another type of filtration is called vacuum filtration. Vacuum filtration involves using a vacuum source to speed up the filtration. The apparatus looks like this. There's a filter flask that's clamped to a ring stand. There's a hose that's connected to a vacuum aspirator and when you turn the water on here, a vacuum will get pulled through this hose through the filter flask and then on the top there's something called a Buchner funnel that has a circle filter paper inside. Then when the vacuum is going you can pour your solution through this filter and it'll rapidly filter your solid liquid mixture. This is the end of the part two video. Stay tuned for the next video where I talk about techniques of recrystallizing a solid to purify it and melting point analysis of solids to determine their purity and identity. If you found this video useful check out the next one in the series or watch the prior video and consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. My name is Brant Kodrowski. Thanks for watching.